welcome back in this video we are going to build a pricing grid and i think this is a really good example because um it's got a couple things first of all we're using flexbox to create these uh columns here and then uh, we also have opportunity to either center them like they are now or show you how to use equal column heights but still make sure that this button this call to action button is at the bottom. That's a, that's a request I get from clients quite a bit and uh, previously had been a bit of a pain. So uh, what I want to do is get started, open up your index and your style.css and I'm just gonna refresh. So what we've done here is I've set you up with some HTML. Let's go over the HTML real quick. Um, I've got this pricing grid and, and this is going to be our flex container. And I've got each div here is a plan div with the class of plan div with the class of plan and inside of it i've just got a whole bunch of content that you'd normally find There's things like headings paragraphs unordered lists and buttons so uh that's that um let's jump on over to our style.css and again this is just base styling um, we want to scroll right down to the bottom and actually start with our flexbox stuff so uh, my pricing grid i've made it 750 uh, and I've centered it. I'm just going to put a border on that just to show you where it is. You get the point, right? Here's a, a 750 pixel wide div. Um, now we want uh, to turn on Flexbox. So how do we do that? Display Flex. That will make it our Flex container. Okay, and uh, let's see what we got here. All right, cool. So all, uh, right away, we have enough content that... Uh, what it's doing is it's distributing the uh, items and th because this dog one here is, is the most content, it's giving it the most space. However, it's not exactly what we want. We want them to be equal width. So uh, we need to go ahead and select each item. And if we look here, pricing grid is our flex container. Each dot plan is going to be our flex item. So dot plan uh, and we will say flex one and that will just individually split it up okay that's good i'm um, just going to give some uh, styling to this one right here say background gpa 255 255 0 0.2 cool um i'm gonna go ahead and put some margin on this uh maybe like 20 px and in a previous video i said like yeah you have to sort of pay attention to your margin because you're still doing the box model but just like regular html um, or regular CSS, sorry, when you apply a margin to an item that doesn't have an explicit width on it, it's just going to eat into everything that we had there. So I'm going to give some padding to it, border radius of 4px, text line center. Okay, so that should, all right, that's looking pretty good. Um, all right, now we actually need to go ahead um, and we did our flex one. I'm going to move this to the bottom here. Now, this might be the layout that you want. I get this uh, request fairly often from clients where you'd like to have three three columns here and they should all be exactly the same size determined by whatever is the highest. Uh, and then usually what also comes along with that is, oh, can you just put the bot buttons all at the bottom? Because I know that the text is sometimes shorter or longer, but I would like the call to action buttons to always be all along the bottom. So how do we do that? Um, so by default, these ones right here, the align items are stretch. And I'm going to show you in just a second where we're going to change it to align items into center. And, and we'll see what that does. It takes them and that's kind of what we're looking for at the end of the day. Uh, however, if we don't want that, the default is stretch. And when we have that on, it stretches them as high as the tallest one is, which is pretty great. Um, however, how do we get these buttons to then go to the bottom? Uh, I know that we have uh, the ability to overwrite a single item and say align self flex end. So how do we do that? Let's go ahead and select our, like, let's say dot plan. What do we got on that? Uh, CTA, there's a class, so dot CTA. And let's say align self flex end, and that should stick it right to the bottom. So I'll give it a refresh and it doesn't do anything. And that's because align self flex end, that is a flex box property that is applied to a flex item. 
Now, what is our flex item in this case? Well, flex item is the plan and the flex container is a pricing grid. So anything inside of this flex item, it's really nothing for us. So we actually need to go one step further and also make this plan display flex as well. So remember in the last video we talked about nesting flex boxes this is another situation where you would do that. So say display flex and oh my goodness, what happened? Well, since we display flex, it's going to try and make it into rows. So what we need to go ahead here and do is say flex wrap wrap. So they will wrap onto the additional lines and that fixes some of it, but still we've got all kinds of issues here where maybe this, like see this paragraph right here, it can technically fit right beside the H3 of fish. So really not what we want just yet. So we need to go ahead and select all of the new flex items. So if this plan now is a flex container as well, this H2, this paragraph, this unordered list, this paragraph and this link, those are all flex items. So we need to select them. So now plan angle bracket star, that means all direct descendants of the plan, which selects all of your flex items. And you can say flex one, see what that gives us. <laughs> it's broken again. You can see why this flex box stuff is so frustrating. Uh, every time you try to add something, it just gets worse and worse. Um, but again, it's because there's no width on those. So we can say flex basis 100% and everything is fixed for us. We can actually do a little bit of a shorthand there, one, one, hundred percent. That'll set the grow, shrink, and the basis all in one go, and we're off to the races there. So great, we're in really good shape there. However, if we don't want it to be 100%, 100%, 100%, which is uh, kind of cool, um, what we can do is go back up to our pricing grid and get use our align items property and we can set that to center. So it's not gonna stretch them across. It's gonna figure out how high is this pricing grid. Let's put a border on that so we can see where it is. To see this red border, yeah, I'll bump that up a little bit. And that's how big it is. And it's gonna center them right inside of that flex container. So again, another really nice example as to when you would use Flexbox um, as a component in a website and uh, as well as using a nested flex where the plan is both a flex item and a flex container. See you in the next video.